Welcome back to Winnipeg Direct on Shaw. Returning to our panel is Jim Tree Living, Chairman and Owner of Boston Pizza International Inc. and panelists for investors on Dragon's Den, Doug Bueller, President of Bueller Furniture, and joining us is Krista Walkden, partner with Myers Norris Penny. In this segment, we will be continuing to discuss the state of the Canadian versus American business, this time with an eye on the future of the relationship. So Krista, I'm gonna throw this one at you. How do you think we are gonna ma maintain our relationship with America? I, I think um, to Jim's earlier point about making sure that we are encouraging our youth to um, come up with, continue to come up with creative ideas and um, have an eye on the market that is the U.S. and make sure that entering into that market, they're doing it strategically and um, with a very proactively and with a business um, business uh, smarts um, to it because you know when you look at the the U.S. economy and and the talent that is down there you know there there's a lot of talent down there to compete against and um, but at the same side there's a lot of talent up in Canada so D now Doug do you think that um, the border tightening has affected business between the two countries in, in um, like the security issues. Yeah. Um, well, you need a passport to to fly across the the the, the border now. I guess it, it's it's the new world, I think, and that and that probably won't go back to the way it was. It's just the new reality of of the shape of security in the world. So, um, you know, you can pre if you want to ship goods from Winnipeg to to the U.S., you they've got all sorts of pre clearance rules now where they know what's in that truck long before that truck gets to the border and they will know when you get there if they're going to make it difficult for you to cross but it, it hasn't been that bad I think everybody's just understood this is part of the world in which we live and I don't know if it has has been if, if it's encumbered trade directly but you know it, it adds expense mm -hmm. like there's all if you're having to do all this paperwork and and somebody has to pay for it I think if you look on the intellectual capital side as you're sending your people across the border, um, some of the restrictions in, in, in that regard um, could impact your ability to send your people down there as a business owner to conduct business down there and that you know you have to be maybe a little bit more careful about the story that you're telling as you're crossing the border that it, versus what you may have been able to uh, have, have done in the past. So Jim, what advice can you give to business owners in Canada who are wanting to branch into the U.S. market? Remember, it's a big market. We did the same thing. Uh, I think you've heard from both these panelists that we're sitting here talking about this, and I was thinking about what they were saying. It is a, a different market. It, it, it's completely different. And I found that moving there. You've got visa. You've got to get cleared on. You've got uh, all kinds of business. They do business completely different than the way we do. You know, we deal with five, five or six institutes up here for, for banks. Right. There's multi. They don't, they don't, there's no matching down there. There's hundreds and hundreds of banks. 4,600 banks. Exactly. In and you have to be in wow. a situation where they probably lost how many this year? 1,100 banks have gone past or, or changed and whatever. Yeah. So you, there's no national banks that we see. Bank of America is a bit of a national bank. Wells Fargo now is a bit of, a bit of a bank. But it's all individuals in each individual state, which is completely different than the way we do banking up here. Uh, there's no government subsidies down there as such. You mm -hmm. know, they, they, you have to go in either how to, a lot, of the, a lot of entrepreneurs, there's a lot of money is what we call in the sidelines right now in the US. Americans are working probably the best I've ever seen with less, than the, with less people and more production. We're starting to see that big in the United States. That's why that, that number that you see every day on the unemployment is not changing. Remember, in, in the best of times, there'll be four and a half to 5% unemployment in the United States. But there's 9%. So there's 4.5% that didn't get hired back after this recession. It is coming back. If you look at some of the major companies, they're all making great profits, but they're doing it with le less people right now. So they're running smarter and faster. And I think those are the things as Canadians we have to learn before we go in there. You look, we have a tendency sometimes to look and say, oh, there's 325 million people down there. There's only 35 million here. Mm -hmm. This is, should be easy. Well, competition is a lot tougher down there than it is here. And we saw that going into the U.S. Uh, we've been there 10, 13 years now with, with Boston Pizza. And when I look at that scenario now, it's been the toughest market I've ever opened in my life. It's the hardest job I've ever done. And I said to my partner, we've invested over $50 million down there. 
and we're not we're just at the break even now but that's our own money this is we never borrowed any money we didn't we couldn't go to an institute I couldn't even get a credit card down there you know because wow. they, do, they don't even talk to one another you imagine American Express I got American Express in Canada American Express here a visa here visa here means nothing down there I still had to use my Canadian visa I didn't even have a credit line down there who is this guy he comes shows up when he's over 50 years age and he's got a he's, he's got a credit cards from Canada who cares so I think care, as Canadians yeah. we have to really go to your your uh, 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 accountant and sit down and, and find out all about before you go in there don't just randomly jump up and say well I'm going to the States because I'm it's doing well here in Canada right we've seen a number of companies go down there future shop for one uh, Canadian Tire went down under a different name all come back home all get whapped and come back Royal home. Bank came back home. Royal yeah. Bank came back just recently you know I think some of the things that have changed in 9-11 was unbelievable I got there in 2000 and all of a sudden we got there's two wars going on now <laughs> there's been there there's been a recession there's and a recession was big and it's still going on in some yeah. areas and it'll take when they're waiting for this big explosion I don't think you're gonna see anything from till 213 maybe 214 before they cure the the housing crisis alone you know we're seeing so I think as Canadians take a hard look at what you're doing make sure you're prepared to go through all these things make sure that whatever you thought we're gonna use for money to go down there double it because you're going to take time to get really into that position where you can really do good business. This is the first year that we're going to be uh, what I call profitable in the sense that I'm starting to get a return on my money. And you've been down years. there for 10 years? 10 years. 10 years. Wow. So, yeah, and we've invested over $50 million cash. I mean, this is my partner and I have put into this. I could have stayed at home and said, you know, forget about this. But yeah. again, it gives you a bigger international look too. Because we, we were also told that as a Canadian company, you know, you're just a nice little Canadian company. Even if I went to sell franchises outside in Mexico, for instance, mm -hmm. we're in Mexico now, and and if you're not successful in the United States, they got this feeling. Well, you're you're not successful. Well, you're Canada. I know it works in Canada, but it doesn't work down so, there. So, Jim, knowing what you know now and spending the money that you've spent, would you do it again? Absolutely, but I'd do it like I'm saying. I would have taken more time. I wasn't as bright as I thought I was, and when I went down there, I thought, well, you know, this is easy. Yeah. Surprise, well, surprise. Almost, like almost in the U.S., because it's so vast, you've got little mini absolutely. countries and absolutely. different... Um, different laws in every, every state. Absolutely, absolutely. Krista, what are some... Sorry to cut you off, Doug, but Krista, what are some advantages of doing business in the U.S.? I mean, maybe there's some tax advantages. I think, well, from a corporate standpoint, there's not a lot of, corp uh, there's not a lot of tax advantages right now. Unfortunately, nope. the U.S. has one of the um, highest corporate rates um, in the world. They're working at bringing that down. They realize it's a competitive disadvantage. Um, we'll see what happens over the next year or two years to see if they are able to bring it down. But I think it's just being able to tap into that to that market. I mean, you're going to get to a certain point in Canada where, where perhaps you've saturated that market or your particular product has um, a niche um, in, in the U.S. and you're able to, to explode in, in the U.S. And, you know, to everyone's point, you just, you just do it smartly. You do it, um, you prepare yourself before really you go Really go to... Uh, North Penny and having these guys sit down and talk to you and show you your whole plan. Get like the, a business it, plan built. Like business plan, plan. Exactly. exactly. It's such a fundamental thing. Yeah. And so many people get into business and say, you know, I mean, we, we had one client, you know, want to go down, go, go down to the U.S. We challenge, you know, challenge them. Do you think you're going to be profitable? Yes. No business plan, no projection. And, weren't, you know, at the end of the day, weren't successful. Right. So, Krista, are there any advantages for America coming up to Canada to doing business tax-wise or just disadvantages? Uh, I mean, certainly uh, tax-wise, again, it, I think it flips back to just taking advantage of, of the market, mm -hmm. um, another market up here. I think the one thing you got to do, when, and we were talking about this, is, is another thing you have to do is you should sit down with your lawyer and find out what you have to do for putting your, your stuff in trust before you go down there. If you, as me as an operator, when I went down there as an owner, right. I've got all my assets in Canada. Well, they have irrevocable trust down there. So you better do all your trust work before you leave to go down there. And, and it's a huge thing because now you, you have no advantages. If you die in the United States a, as an owner and you're, all your stuff is in this part of the world, then you have a real problem because the, the U.S. government wants 40% of your taxes paid within 90 days after you die. And it's worldwide income. So, oh my gosh, you, you know, you, did I take insurance out for this? Things you don't think about. So 
take a hard look at before you take a leap. The, mo the most uncomfortable position you can be in as an advisor is when you're a client or a potential client comes to you and said, I just did this. Yep. And, and for, you know, it's, it's, it's always a lot more difficult to get unwind things in place and unwind after the fact, whereas if you proactively seek advice, um, there's so many different things we can, we can do to help structure the business properly going across the border. Um, and vice versa, coming coming up, but U.S. businesses coming. And I don't up think you should be scared to go down. I think once you do all these preparations, mm -hmm. it is a great country to do mm -hmm. work with. We've got over 60 units in there. We've got we've jumped off to Mexico from there, and I think it's a great country to work in. Absolutely great country to work in. But God, do your homework before you go. Mm -hmm. I mean, NAFTA obviously has put in the free trade agreement, but do you think America still looks at Canada as big brother, little brother, and now that the economy is? you know, slowing down, they want to keep things more in America? Well, you don't, you don't realize when you get there until you get there, they don't know anything about what you're talking about. They don't they care. Just, they don't know anything about, you. what's this free trade? Who, who, who that's, well, well that was, uh, that's in Washington. Yeah. We don't know anything about it in Texas. We don't know anything about it. You know, they don't want to know anything about it because they don't know anything about it. They don't read about it, what you and I, right. which is a big thing for us. But not for them. Yeah, the majority they, they state the number every so often, the number of Americans with a passport, and it's it's scary. Like all Canadians have a passport, but there's some people that live and die in the state in which they were born and don't even leave the county. Maybe it, it's it, they they they're very uh, inclusive that way. So. I had to tell you one little story that happened to me when I was there. I was getting insurance for for life insurance. I had the lady come in. It was a nurse took my blood, and she sat down and she said, "Where are you from?" And I said, "Verdon." <laughs> Where are you born? Where are you born? Verdon, Manitoba. How do you spell Manitoba? Mani and, and, and that's in Canada, right? Is that with a C or a K? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I, this is Why no do you word think they life. like that? I because mean when, when you look at it, here's the other side to this. If I said to you today, I'm living in Texas, yeah. and, you, and you talk to an American down there, and they say, well, how many provinces in Canada? Don't know. They, they, they always, is Toronto close to Vancouver or whatever? They don't yeah. know. Oh, but if I say, turn to you and I say, you know, how many states are there in Mexico? Can you name them? In Mexico? Yes. Probably not all of them. Can you name any of them? No. Nope. See? <laughs> so my point is, I was the same But I boat. can name the states in America. Yeah, but that, it's relationship to where they're living. Texas, you're close to Mexico, so they know all that stuff. Right. So but we, we're they, right above them. We're their neighbor. But they don't care. They don't they, even they don't, know you Minnesota know what's above North them? Dakota. Yeah. Right? Like, they what, don't even know What they exist. know, <laughs> what they're looking at, is I said to the same lady, well, don't you go anywhere? Where do you go from Texas? Well, I go to Mexico for holidays or I go to Colorado. You know, okay. So Canada is, it's something with mountains and a mountain and a couple other things running around and that's it. They, there's no advantage to knowing what's going on in Canada because they don't care. You know, I think with the, with the state of the U.S. economy, I think more people are, and, and the success that Canada has, I think more people are be becoming to appreciate Canada. Mm -hmm. And I've even had some people comment to the fact that, you know, if, if, if this really gets bad in the U.S., Canada sort of is the first country that they would consider sort of moving to or, or coming to as sort of a... a it, it's a different thing. It's yeah. really different. Well, I just want to thank all of you guys for being here on the show. That is all the time we have. I would like to thank all our viewers for watching us here on Winnipeg Direct. And if you have any ideas for upcoming shows, contact us through Facebook or Twitter. I'm your host, Megan Duffy. We'll see you next time here on Shaw.